Here it is. Again, they're just freshly cut, right? And that comes from from stuff like this, right? So when they put this in here, that means they're gonna put this. Yeah. So at this point, these these we call these blanks, neck blanks. Uh, we plan them so they're nice and uh, level. Uh, and then we routed out the channel for the truss rod, and then we put the truss rod inside, glue the top on, and then we're just letting it acclimate a little bit in here. So first thing it is, this goes in a press to really glue it together tightly. We'll see out there the press. After that, we bring it in here, and we just let it acclimate. You know, when you put it in the press, just do you press what's here, or do yeah, you we'll take a look at out? that outside. Oh, okay. Thing is about a place like this, when it's a it's a factory that's operated continuously since 1976, you have all kinds of dusty corners of stuff. Yeah, yeah. But that's part of the coolness of this place, yeah. that that's there. It's yeah, not yeah, a yeah. sterile place that was built a few years ago. This is the place that Leo built, and there's little artifacts of all kinds of stuff. I believe it. Like there's a body I found with pickups and everything in it, but. The guy in final assembly screwed up the build. So they carved in it, scratched it all up, and carved in it. Chris's build, and they hid it up away in the rafters so they don't get in trouble. Well, I dug that thing out, and it's like, you know what, I can fix whatever he did. But what I'm going to do is make a new neck for it. When I put it together, everything would look shiny except the body. So I brought this thing out. It's been there since 1983, and then I'm going to complete it. And leave it with all the scratches on. Awesome. That is great. Let's see it. Okay, let's go. I'll show you the body in the lab. So inside the wood shop, what we have is kind of a, a mix of old school Leo Brenner with a little bit of new school where where I think it matters. Uh, all of if you look at all of these benches in here, they're all these silver things and the wood top. These benches were all made by a man named Ronnie Beard. And if you look at uh, pictures of the old Fender factory, you know, when it was Leo's factory, the benches look the same. In fact, a few of the benches we actually bought when they closed down the Fender factory. Uh, the, old factory. the old factory was only about a mile away. So when Leo sold the company, the Fender company, Leo sold it in 65, he continued to work for Fender as a consultant for five more years. That's uh, when he started CLF Research, Clarence Leo Fender Research. So he's no longer the owner of the Fender company, but he's got his side thing over here, you know. He needed to have his own place, so he moved out of the Fender company, all of his lab, all his stuff, and then he moved it elsewhere, and then it ended up here. What we did in here is, in the old days, they used a thing called the pin router to a little out of the shape. Yeah, yeah. And a pin router is a big, nasty, scary thing to operate. So we finally, well, it's fun to watch. It's relatively unsafe. So we let go of the pin router and used two hot BF4 CNC machines to do the dirty work. No, they're computer. Yeah, but all they're doing is the dirty work. After that, all the sculpting, all that detailed stuff, that's hand. And that's why we have this, what I call the Hall of Fame. This is what I want to be like a touchstone. This is the ideal. When you shape that neck and it feels like a million dollars, I want everybody in here touching that. So, is it, which one's the left handed? Yes, yeah, but it really doesn't make any difference to the, to the hand, just, just to feel. Yeah. If you were to grab one of these things and feel how nice and oh, round yeah. that is. Where did they get the, the height? I mean the for the depth. The depth? Yeah, I mean the, to make it this because they're all like this, right? This all oh well we have different specifications available. You do? Yeah. 
And so what we do is we just have the CNC just knock off most of it. And then we leave a little bit of meat on because we know we're going to be doing that in that last bit of the hand shape. Yeah. So the objective with the machine is just to take out some of this, the dirty work where people can actually get hurt yeah. and put all the emphasis on what you touch. Yeah. Yeah. So the skull thing in the arm feels like it looks like that. It's a 7.5 radius. Yeah. Like a, like a new neck, got telecast and stuff. Yeah, we got that kind of stuff too because yeah. we know it's like different flavors of ice cream, right? I might love that. The dirty work. If you close that, nobody's going to get hurt if something goes flying. In the old days of the big batteries, sometimes they'd be pushing it too hard and stuff would go flying. Maybe your fingertip goes flying, or the, or the piece of work they're pushing around goes get you know they're they're bringing up the uh, the spindle and it catches it and it throws it. Imagine a block of wood with a steel template getting blown into that door. So those two dirty work. And over here, this is where old school Leo is. All this is uh, Leo Fender's old equipment, uh, things that he designed. Like this, he designed this Xander and Ronnie Beers built it. Oh, so he's just doing it. Yeah. Oh, so, wow. If you look at the, there's a video around in the old Fender company, you know, back in the 50s. Somewhere in there is a Xander that looks just like this. Because when Leo Fender created this factory, basically it was a chance to start fresh. So he just did everything the best way he knew at that time. Uh, let's, this, one, this one got done. It's going to need a refinish. So that's a, that's a rework job there. Maybe it's going to work. Maybe it's not going to work. But it gets you to go. Over here, this one's going to be I can order a few. Yeah, I think he's making a kill of some day. Yeah. Do I want one of those? With a swamp ass body? Ooh. Is that swamp ass? Yeah. We can use the body of a kill of some for my thing because it has more room. Up, you know up that up Sandy? Up. Yeah. That Sandy pad. Is that another deal? No. It's just woodworking. It's just a question of how much effort you want to put into it. We just have to, we have to try harder than some people. So that contour you feel is no machine. This is just like a huge custom stuff. That's what it is. Everything is made by hand. Put in things like fingerboards that we press and press. So many of block standing fingerboards with a block that has a little radius shape in it to help make sure this whole thing is real nice and smooth and radius.
Kenosha, Wisconsin. I love Old Navy America. Oh, that is amazing. After it gets sanded, yeah, beautiful. It's just a little bit of a roll. This is what Leo Fender loved. It just feels like home. You know? People buy used to buy guitars and think they play them for 50 years to get that. And still, this is the best of the CLF Research Neck. You know? God, I love that feel. Uh, I want people to work when they're building it. They know they're building something that's going to make somebody happy. They're not just getting something done and whatever. Oh. Here's it. You know what? I imagine I never want to be like the Laverne and Shirley thing where the bottles are just oh, yeah, going yeah. down and they don't give a crap. You know? I worked in a cookie factory. Okay. <laughs> it was incredible. I, 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 for the experience, no money. But yeah, yeah. When you cook them, they go through a conveyor pole. Oh, okay. And so at the end of the oven, you come out of a pan and it was the job where you took the pans, the turns, and put them in the thing that takes them down and get hot. And it's a mixture. You get the cook stuck in the oven. So the oven kept going no matter what. Oh, man. And I hit my pan and I got the job there. So next thing you know, I got the same old same here. Put the things there. Oh, 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 We're all working in the cooking. And you're keeping the shit going? Well, yeah, <laughs> well. <laughs> that's where the Laverne and Shirley thing is. Because this one that is the native of the uh, uh, Sarsi native uh, of the, 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 the singer was uh, African American, okay, like Canadian American, yeah. black guy. He had that rhythm. He could do that. Going. But, but the, the native. <laughs> He used to get one, he'd get it, miss it. Next thing you know, the things are piling on the floor. He digs them back, and he didn't. He just didn't get it. 
food well enough and you can't stop it. Oh, you start eating it. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah, you start eating the stuff, man. There you go. You were doing that. I, that yeah, works. Like, <laughs> Chris is built the same that I have. Oh, dude. That's oh, funny. No, it's funny. No, this is, this is not a factory. This is a, this is a art studio. This is, yeah. yeah, it's pretty amazing. I mean, it's amazing. Art. We got work to do, yeah. but it's it should be pleasant. You know, yeah. people should. You know, if you're going to build guitars, product, the product you're putting out. If you're going to build guitars, you should get to enjoy doing it. Yeah. Not be a slave to it. Yeah. That it sucks. Exactly. It's a, uh, yeah. This is Carrie. This is uh, yeah. Little Hub. Good to meet you. Nice to meet you, Mr. Chong. Good to meet you, Matt. Good to meet you. You know what? I never take pictures with people, but I will do this today. Me too. Yeah. yeah. Okay. What's that sir? Uh, I think that's the nitrocellulose lacquer one. All right, so this was like the, the green one that you tried earlier, this ASAT special here, with Leo Fender's magnetic field design pickups and his saddle lock bridge. These are like his core improvements that he was, yeah. that he was making. And then here's another one. This one's kind of cool. I thought you might kind of dig how this one looks because it's a little more, got this subdued traditional vibe. It's a nitrocellulose lacquer thing. You can like check it, it out. I, like, I, I love this one, actually. You do? Yeah, I do. Why don't you just take it home? Are you giving it to me? Well, if you dig it, yeah. I don't have to steal it? No. Okay. That's why he brought me. <laughs> what the hell? If you dig it, that's well, then, cool. Thank you, my friend. <laughs> here, no, no, come here, come here, come here, come here. Thank you, thank you, brother. Hey, it's my pleasure. Thank Enjoy it in good health. Nice older body than the nitro. Uh, so when this starts to sink in there, what do you call them? Hum, hum these are single coils. Mm -hmm. So they're they're these this are like standard, right? robust single coils. Mm -hmm. And say compared to say like a, like a Telecaster, you know, where the neck pickup is typically really weak. This thing is thick and smooth and jazzy. Oh yeah. And yeah. together they make this great jangly thing. Oh. Just figure it's like okay, you know what. The telly is you've had those things. So just go, this was Leo Fender's next one. You know how I picked it? Uh, what would Guitar Shorty do? Oh, really? That's yeah, real. Guitar Shorty, you know him? Oh, very well. Really? Oh, man. Very well. I know, you know about that guy? Myself. You do? Yeah. Well, he, must, he must be here. Oh, like shit, I've known him here. since whatever, like 90. Six, he's, five, he's, something like that. Four. He's, he was you know, he used to do a front flip off the stage. Yeah. With a guitar. Like, I remember talking to him about that and going to you know because he was worried about stopping to do that because yeah. it was a signature thing. But we watched him getting old. It's like this is not going to end well, <laughs> you know. <laughs> but something happened and he and uh, he and he stopped doing it and it's like. Good. I can't Good. find any video of it though. I looked online. I really? Can't, I can't find one video. No, of I don't think there is. No. I, but I remember him doing it at a yeah. Christmas party we had. And you saw it? Like, yeah, we had all the employees down like, at this Mexican shit. place there. Yeah. And, uh, and uh, guitars, this must have been like 93, 94. Yeah. And, and Shorty was playing there and he did that thing, got up all the amp and he flips over. <laughs> and it's like, <laughs> what the hell is this guy doing? <laughs> Oh no! <laughs> First time I saw him. Well, one time he, he forgot the stage was so high, and he jumped off the stage. It was twelve feet off the ground. But but you know he but he was uh, like a gymnast. He was he, well, he's bulky up in the shoulders. Yeah. So roll. Ground, he's like a pork chop. He, he just, just landed and rolled. Rolled. Yeah. Just, oh, he did. Rolled. Yeah. I was thinking, boy, that's an no, no. But that's his whole thing. He would get there and then just at the last minute he tuck his head in and it would just hit him here yeah. in his shoulders. And that's how he did it. Then he'd jump on his feet. Oh, so running. this was a this was a this was a shtick of his, but the well, twelve you know, feet was like twelve feet was a big <laughs> well, twelve yeah. feet, man. <laughs> jump off and do a performance? He he came up to Canada with uh, T Bone Walker. Yeah. And T Bone Walker had an act too that kind of stopped his career. He could do a put his guitar behind his neck, yeah, and then do a back bend and pick up a glass of whiskey with his teeth upside down. And then, as he came up, stood up, he would drink the whiskey and then go into a splits, the full splits, with his guitar here and a glass of whiskey in his lips. I saw him do it one time. 
And then the next time I saw him, he was so drunk, he couldn't, they had to carry him on stage. And he was playing his guitar with it, with it out of tune, you know how they untune it for the airplane ride. The bass player was leaning over trying to just get some, some sound. <laughs> <laughs> and, and that's that's where I got the blind melon bit from. It was that night because after he finished, blah blah, he was like, he was incoherent. He got a fucking standing ovation. Of course he did. It's legend. And and Cheech and I, we were both there that night. We looked at each other and we said, and then when we started doing blind melon chitlin, we put it all in there. Oh my God! But. No, I know Shorty really, and Shorty had a jazz master. You know the old yeah. uh, Fender jazz master with the with the things up here. Oh, wait, what year are you from? Oh, it's the fifties from the fifties. Was it no, old? No, no, what that, that you're talking about? You saw him when I saw him. Yeah, sixty-three, sixty-two, way back. Yeah. Because what what we did? Let's see. Right after that, right after Shorty and and, uh, and all those, yeah, they, uh, there was a little uh, club in Chinatown that they all played at. You know? uh, I saw John Lee Hooker, the uh, all blues club. You know, they, they came up there, and a few other people. But I opened my own blues club. It's called the Blues Palace, and we opened it with uh, I can Tina Turner, and we were the we got them and. It, the whole show, I get the, the, the dancers, the, the whole show, the band, got it for $750 for a Tuesday night. <laughs> and we packed the joint. It was the first time they were up in, in Vancouver. And then they came back almost every month and just, you know, the other promoters, they saw what, what we had, but we, we brought them up first. Well, we, we introduced the Blues to Vancouver. If you don't think You'll be home I'm on 